Right, I've just come up to the lake on the 25th. It's dropped a bit since last week because uh, you can tell it's dropped because of the weed, the weed beds are showing. Not a breath of wind. Beautiful. Yeah, if you see all those weed beds down there, and they were all completely underwater. So there'll still be a flow, there must still be a flow in the top end um, because it was so um, pronounced last week. But I'm just going to walk around here, see if we can get one of these birds just flying out. Oh, it's just so nice up here when it's still. He has dropped a lot. Um, still going to be good. Just going to get over these rocks. I'm trying to hold the cam camera steady. Okay, we're going to head around to the top end now. Yeah, it's um, bloody beautiful up here today. Not a breath of wind, um, so that's amazing. Um, the lake has dropped a wee bit, but it's still fine. But um, I'll just show the water flowing in now. So that's the water flowing in now. It's only about a quarter of what it was last week, but that's all right. Um, lovely conditions up here at the moment the wind will probably come up later but it's just bloody beautiful yeah we're just about to have a fish i just want to say two things sand flies are really bad this is what you don't do what i did is i closed my eyes and i just got the insect repellent and I just sprayed it all over my face don't ever do that <laughs> it just runs you open your eyes it ran into my eyes got on my lips Oh, it's terrible. And I thought I was going blind. I had to get about 10 minutes washing my eyes out. So don't do that. <laughs> and another thing I want to say is um, about 10 years ago, I met a guy in hospital. His name was Bruce. And he was getting a new knee. I got a new half knee. He was getting a new knee. And his, he was about 79, 80. And his um, wife had just died of cancer. And he was saying that in his, when he was more active, he used to go tramping up in the Rotorua. And he used to run marathons. And he used to go fishing. And I thought, oh, well, that's exactly the same as me. So um, I used to take him out um, fishing. Anyway, Bruce had a massive stroke a few years back. And he's lost his voice. And now he's in his late 80s and he's um, in a retirement home and he's very, very frail. 
And I went around and saw him the other day and I said, I'll tell you what, Bruce, if you were younger when I met you, you'd be coming up to the lake with me, you know. And he just smiled and nodded his head because he can't talk. Anyway, Bruce gave me this rod. It's a six-piece travel aerial travel fly rod. Really nice rod. And um, so, Bruce, I'm going to catch a fish for you, mate. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, I know you can't be here in person, but you can be here in spirit, okay? So I'm going to catch a fish for you with your rod. Yeehaw! So um, it's going to happen. I don't know how to use these things very much, but I've got sinking line on it. I've got, I'll cast it out into the, um, the current and get the current to take it out for me. That's why I was hoping there's still a really good flow so I could get it out. So anyway, here we go, Bruce. Come fishing, eh? <laughs> right, yeah. I don't know how to do this bloody stuff, but we'll get it going. Yeah. I'll just rely on the current to take it out until I get a bit of till I know what's going on here. Oh yeah, okay, I think I got it. This is sacrilege for all the fly fishermen. But um, it's going out and it's sinking. Okay, right, we'll just see what happens here. Oh, it really is sinking line. Let's make sure that's the right angle, yep. Yeah. Okay, I think I might have this. Oh, yeah. Well, there's no wind. It'll probably come up later this afternoon, but at the moment it's absolutely beautiful. It's just a shame it's not the big current that it was last year, last week. What I'll do next one, I'll get it out the current more and try and get it out of it further and get the current to take it out. But it, I think we'll get one though. I'll move over here a bit. Okay, now. Yeah, Bruce, you'd love it up here. You'd absolutely love it. That is fantastic. Okay. Now I can see that lure floating. Well, you'll be able to see it too. It's floating out there. Now I'm just letting this line out more. And it's drifting out. It's just going underwater now. So I might have to might wait a while and let it sink a bit. And I'll just keep feeding the line out. I keep feeding the line out into the current. We'll get it out of it further. Right. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier there's a big more flow. That's what I was hoping. Last week there was a big current. I thought, oh, this, if I bring the fly rod up, I'll just flick it into there and I'll just whip it right out. But it's um, just not the same, but <laughs> never know.
Maybe if I stand right in the current, I'll... I might do that in a minute. If I stand over there and be fishing right into it, yeah, I think I might do that. Could be the go. I think the first time I came up here I might have come up with my nephew, um, Andrew. I'm not too sure if that was the first time or second time, Andrew will know. Anyway, how you going Andrew? <laughs> um, but I came up and it was a bloody Norway's gale, you know, silly, silly bloody coming up and that. I didn't know really. And um, I got to the KC hut and there were soldiers there. Uh, an army sergeant had brought up his um, crowd up here, or a lieutenant has brought up his um, platoon up here. There's about 15 guys up there, um, 12 or 10. Oh, anyway, um, I came up here and camped over there in those bushes. I walked straight past the case uh, trust polder hut. I didn't even know the trust polder hut was there. That's how bad it was. Um, I slept the night, didn't sleep at all, it was just, oh, unbelievable. Got up in the morning and there was just waves all over the, the lake and it was just full on got gale. So I turned around, because I was a marathon runner there, I was fit as, turned around, walked all the way out. Called in at the KC hut and the army guys were still there. Anyway, I went home. And my wife said, why'd you come home? It's such lovely weather. And because she didn't know about the Norwester up here. It wasn't raining. It was just an absolute overcast and absolute gale. Anyway, I spent the night at home and came up the next day. And I never forget that because I had blisters on my heels and I got that second skin stuff. And I came up. The army guys are in the hut again they'd been up to the lake fishing and gone back to the hut and they couldn't believe the fact that I'd come up here again. Anyway I came and stayed at the trust polder hut and uh, it would settle, the weather had settled down, I came up here, I got some fish, uh, went back to the Casey, the army guys had gone and then I came out. That was Andrew Shelter, you know coming in through Andrew Shelter. I didn't know about coming up the river but that was a bit of a carry on but wow I never, what, what conditions were just amazing that that night I came up here um, and then it would, um, the wind would be blowing like an absolute gale and then it would stop and you think oh the wind stopped and then you'd hear this wind coming down the valley like a train coming down the <laughs> yeah unbelievable um, yeah that was a trip and a half that must have been in the 1980s yeah young guy then about 30 well, I've been going for a couple of hours with no luck at all with Bruce's fly rod. Having trouble here, Bruce. So I've just um, come down to a, a smaller flow. And I'm just letting the line out now. Hopefully, we'll get one for you, mate. Got to work for it. Nice bit of water down here. Nearly at the backing. Okay. Here we go, mate. This is really nice out here. Beautiful. Hey Bruce, we hooked on the one. How about that? The fly rod did the job. Oh yeah, Bruce. Ha 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 ha. Well it took a while but we got one. 
Yeah, nice fish. Come on, buddy. Oh, ho, ho. That's a nice rainbow. That's just a regular Mr. Simpson on there. Yeah, oh yeah. Come on. Woohoo! Lovely fish. Yeah, Bruce just like beat up here, eh? Oh yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna bring her in. Come on. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Come on, buddy. Ooh, there's a big run. I can't get the leader through the eye, so I just got to bring it out. Okay. And you come. And you come, buddy. Oh. I try and beach it. Oh, -ho -ho. Yeah, how am I going to do this? <laughs> okay. I'm going to grab that leader. I can grab the leader. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I grabbed the leader and it broke the bloody Mrs. Simpson off. Sorry, Bruce, that was my fault. Yeah, it's been a funny sort of day. I fished it from 9 o'clock to 10 to... or to 2 o'clock. <laughs> um, nothing, apart from Bruce's fish. Which I didn't land. Sorry about that, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, really sorry about that. I wanted to get it in for you. Um, yeah, just don't grab the leader because it's probably only, only three pound or whatever at the end of the leader. And I just because I couldn't wind a uh, line in. Um, I didn't have a net. I suppose I should have just walked back and dragged it up the beach. Um, but anyway, that's the way it goes. But at least we had one on, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, apart from that. There's been nothing, absolutely nothing. I haven't stopped fishing apart from, I uh, changed the line on my little reel here. Apart from that, I have not stopped fishing. I've been up and down, up and down, and even Tim's Corner didn't produce. So, um, yeah, it's like that sometimes. Uh, last week, I think I caught four and lost eight. <laughs> and um, same sort of conditions. It's a beautiful day. It's absolutely fantastic up here. Beautiful. Um, there was more water flowing in last week, but that wouldn't make any difference. And uh, so what I'm going to do, I'll go up and down again, and then I'll go around and I'll cross that river because the water will be lower. It won't be 
bloody treacherous last week, won't be like that. So I'll get over there and I'll get out over that beach over there and I'll give that a go. And um, I'll probably stay there for the rest of the afternoon. And um, then I'll head out. But I'm definitely going to catch another fish. <laughs> At least one other fish. But it's just funny how it goes. Um, yeah, this is like it is. I've been here once before, a couple of times before. And it's been absolutely dead. And you just pick up one. Or one here or one there. And uh, I remember years ago, I, was, I didn't catch anything all day. And I thought, oh no, what the heck. So I went out and I thought, oh, I'll just have a go around the corner. I caught two in bloody ten minutes. So um, funny how it works. So okay, we'll just um, catch you later on. Okay, hopefully you'll see me with a fish on. <laughs> so you're on, Bruce. <laughs> Yep. Oh. Oh, is it lively? It's going for it. Just let it take the line out. Oh, it's going over there. Oh, it's going under the shallows. Wow, it took a long time to get that one. We well, haven't landed it yet. Yeah, Bruce, the fly rod's doing the job, mate. It's in the current. of my lead um, back end. I've got the leader there now. I'm not going to grab that bloody leader. Um, I'm just going to walk back. Okay. I'm just going to walk back and bring it up on the beach. Come on. Oh, shit. Come on. No. Oh. Okay. Come on, I'm gonna bring you in here, mate. Well, not too small. Nice fish. Okay. Get the hook out. Look, trusty pliers. Oh, yeah. with your rod, mate. <laughs> How about that? Okay, I'll let it go. 
Up you go, buddy. Yep. Oh, he's gone. Well, that was really good. Really good. I'm so pleased I uh, landed one on your rod, Bruce. But, boy, it took about a long time coming. So we'll um, see if we can get another one. <laughs> yeah, I just, um, I thought oh, I was just so dead, so I just went and had a sleep. Beautiful sleep over there. Had a bit of food. And I got up and I thought, okay, I'll make it around to the, um, to the top end of the lot down the bottom end there. I thought, I'll just give Bruce's rod one more hit, you know. And there you go. So I'm just, this is a sprago bloody way of casting now. I've got this thing going now. I'll just flick it into the current like this until I get down to the backing. Acri absolute sacrilege as far as fly fishing is concerned. But it takes it out. I get down to, down to my back in there, let it drift out, then I walk this way and pull it a bit, get it and um, straighten the line out there, and then I just wind it in. And I think the leader I got on here might be a bit long, I don't know. I don't know enough about it. But certainly landing it, uh, because you can't wind it wide in, uh, well, the lead, my leader won't go through the hole because it's the way I've got my sprago knot. <laughs> but it's been an absolute cracker day, as I said before. Beautiful. Hey, hey Mark Buckley. How are you? Bloody good, mate. I'm wondering if it was you. Yeah, it was me. I saw the name. I almost, I almost chopped past. Yeah, good to see you, man. I've seen, I've seen a few of your videos and things. Oh, good on you. And I thought, I saw you'd been up here. There was an entry, I think it was across Colter. Yeah. And, uh... I've come down there, I thought, there's something on the red box here. The fish scene, I wonder if it's true or not. Yeah, because, um, was a couple of, uh... Well, Tom was up here two times ago or three times ago. I saw you in the book and I was trying to work out how far it was to the Trust Boulder Hut with the bike. And you'd written in there, it's 27 or 26.7 k's. Yeah. And then I met these other guys who are up the top hut, said it's 30 k's to the top hut. So, so how'd you get up? Hmm? How'd you get up? I mountain biked up to Trust Boulder. I'll tell you what, the way to go, and I haven't got one, is a bloody e-bike. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a guy, uh, when I was in here last time, there was a guy came up the river, up the valley, on an e-bike, and he was just fly fishing in the polter, yeah. below truss polter, and he was on a big, like, they've got big ties and all the rest, and they go over the bluff, you know, the pedal assist, but... Yeah, That's yeah. what I was, yeah, I was yeah. actually I spoke before about getting one, because I had a quaddy, but, I, got, but, um, but I wonder if the batteries will get you up and back. Yeah, well, because you, you can go quite a long way, and it just depends how much gear you're carting, but they're bigger bikes and bigger tyres. Yeah, I know, because I was going to get a fat bike because of the tyres, because yeah, I might as well get a bloody e-bike. E he had an e-bike, and he said it just goes over, because he, he, he come over the big bluff down through, obviously way past... He was, he was down on one of the flats and gone way out on the tussock. He said, this thing just rides over everything. <laughs> but, um, gosh, I like it. Coming up from the mountain bike is quite hard work. Because I, I, last, I, was, I, just, I stayed uh, last night at Minchin Biv. And... Where did you come over, though? Where'd you... Uh, well, I biked up here and I was going to do a big loop. I was going to go last night. I was, if, I, if I had got in to Minchin Biv on time, I was going to shoot down Townsend Creek and come yeah. to Townsend Hut. But, I ran out of time, and so I thought, fuck it, I'll stay at Minch and Biv, and then go up on the top. So I went up on the tops, just above, looking over into town 10, where town 10 hut is. Yeah. It was way up there. Oh, yeah, I've stayed in that hut. It about three hours to get up there. Yeah. But it was blowing a wee bit yesterday afternoon about this time. And where are you staying tonight? Well, my mountain bike's at Trust Polter. Oh, yeah, if you have Trust Polter, I'll see you there. I've got a whiskey. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I always say there, it's easier to get out then, see? Yeah, well that's it. It was really good. It's an old friend of mine, 
me out with me, Mark Buckley. He used to run with them, he used to run over the hills. Half past five in the morning we'd get up and run over the hills. He's just been up to the Mitch and Biv. Bloody good. Okay, so I'll see if I can hook into another one here. Push on! Oh yeah, might be coming right now. I can see it on the down deep. Oh, that's a nice rainbow. Come on, buddy. Oh, I don't like it when they do that. Come on. Hey. Hey, it's making the day all worthwhile now. It's another Mitchum Rainbow. G'day buddy, you going back mate. Oh, he's gone. Oh, really nice piece of water out here. Beautiful. Okay, let us sink. You can wind these, I've got this cobra on, you can wind them, oh look at that, out there jumping. You can wind them slowly because I've got a nice action. You certainly went dead most of the day, it was dead as, oh there's a big fish out there, you can see the fin. Wow. <laughs> like a bloody shark. <laughs> Okay. Let this one sink. Oh yeah, look at that. See that? Yeah, oh, another one to the right. Oh yeah, they're rising out there. Well, we're down at Tim's Corner to finish off. I've got about half an hour I can stay here so I can get to the truss polder in the daylight. Be nice to catch one to finish off today. Got to get one here. Rod well, doesn't cast as good as it used to. The tip broke off, so I've got a um, never tip on, but it's shortened by about an inch and a half. This you notice the difference. Oh, fish on, fish on, yep, fish on. This is the one. Yeah, Tim's corner, eh? Well, here you go, eh? The infamous Tim's corner's done it again. <laughs> oh, not a biggie, but it's a lively one. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Ok, 
come on. Well, it took it hard, that one. There you go, mate. Yeah, you'll be in there in a minute, mate. Let's get this hook out for you. There you go. There you go. Oh, boy, they dart away, don't they? Yeah, it was a great day up here today. It really was. Um, not, not a lot of fish, but some good things happened, you know. It's really good to uh, catch, catch a nice one on Bruce's rod. That was good, Bruce. Yeah, I really like doing that for you. And um, special sort of thing to do, eh? And nice rod, really nice rod. And I have to learn how to use it. <laughs> yeah, and it's good to see Mark Buckley. Just came out of the blue while I was fishing. He'd been up in the Mitch and Biv. So um, that's great. I used to run with Mark and tramp with Mark. And he worked with him. So um, excellent stuff. So he's at the Trust Polder Hut. So I'll catch up with him tonight. That's really good. And uh, yeah, it's been a good day. So I better get out now before it gets dark. You know, I just don't like walking down the polder in the dark. So uh, I've just got enough time to get there. Okie dokie. See you next time. Cheers.